It's gonna have to be a lifestyle swing. So moving on to today's focus though, which is all around to-do lists. Like I said, what goes on your to-do list is not what we are focusing on today. That is what I deal with a lot in the membership and what I deal with one-to-one clients. But today is about which of those right to-do lists. Um, and I hinted at before, you need to make sure that you are using the right tool. So to-do lists, productivity tools, focus tools, they are all just tools. They are just that. And if you are not using the right one for the right job and using it correctly, of course, it's not going to serve you. Obs. Um, so today, in today's masterclass, we are going to be talking about the seven different ones. Uh, this is there's always like little subcategories, but we're going to be talking about the seven main ones that I discuss um, repeatedly in my life. Uh, we've got one, the quick fix, two, tasks and to do's, three, daily, four, weekly, five, long term, six, brain drains, seven, project to do list. I just, it kind of bugs me. It's not five or eight. I don't know what it is. I always like five or eight lists, but this list is seven and it felt, I couldn't, I couldn't get it down to five. I felt like they were all so important. Um, and there wasn't an eighth one that I felt really ranked with these seven. So these are the ones we're going to be focusing on today. And like I said, it's about picking the right one for the right job. Uh, so my name is Jessica Barkley. I am the Lifestyle Coach UK um, and I'm award winning Happy Lifestyle Club. You can kind of just see in the background on my mantelpiece the award. Where is it? There. Just hiding there. Very little on my mantelpiece. To be honest, I just have the award in the middle. I was so proud to get it. It was the only one that gave an acceptance speech at the event. Um, but it won Online Business of the Year and it's only £15 a month to join and you get me all the time. No, <laughs> good courses and downloadables and lives and additional workshops. So um, we do additional workshops, masterclasses I do uh, on other places, other platforms, but the workshops just go into the membership. You've got all the backstock of all the previous workshops as well, um, direct access to me. So it's like having your own lifestyle and organization coach. I am a qualified life coach and a qualified a professional organizer as well, among the other ones. Those are my two significant ones um, that really sort of relate to what I do within the club. Um, and we have a lovely online membership forum, uh, community support, um, as well as talking about setting our daily priorities, which you'll hear a bit more about shortly. Um, so, oh, what's in your to-do list toolkit? So we talked about those are the seven that we're going to be covering today. But think about what is it that you currently do when you make a to-do list? What does a to-do list look like you? Is it this like scrappy bit of paper that's just got random things written on it? Um, are you Have you got notebooks and notepads that you use? Maybe you're super duper organized and you already have a copy of my book, <laughs> which has different to-do list structures in there as well. Um, some of which I will touch on today. You don't need the book to be able to do it, but this does have um, like the actual spaces. It's a workbook as well as an informative book as well. So it explains loads of principles, not just to-do lists, other things as well. Um, or maybe you are literally grab a piece of paper out the recycling, write on that and hope for the best. And that's how you do your to-do list. But what is it that you're currently doing at the moment? And then thinking about what isn't currently working. So it might be that you always do it on your phone, but actually for you, when you pick your phone up, you get distracted and you start doing something else and you set a timer and you're like, oh, I'm now gonna like go around what's through here and I'm gonna think about this and I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, and suddenly you're like in to Instagram for two hours and you haven't actually looked at said to do list at all um, and and you're like oh I've actually done what I was meant to be doing bummer um so maybe that's what's not working it's actually having it on your phone isn't as productive maybe you have it on a piece of paper and then you've never got a piece of paper with you so what is it that isn't working about your current system um is it feeling overwhelming um is it that just you always seem you never seem to go back to it like what is it that's not working because that will often help you choose which to-do list system is going to be right for you and um, what you're going to need to add. I am a naturally inept organizer. It's not it's all learnt. It's all like trial and error of finding systems that worked for me over, I've been a coach for over seven years now, um, as well as just trying to keep my life on track. Um, I'm ADHD, I'm autistic, like just my brain wants to do everything but what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, I've built and sold multiple businesses. Um, I have 
the social life I, I was about to say a thriving social life I have the social life I want because <laughs> I don't really like people and um, so I get involved in a lot of activities um I help with charity events and things like that I have lots of time with my daughter um I run my own business I've just started like a second little mini business because <laughs> I love doing branding work and it's just not enough in my life so I started doing that a little bit as well and I find time for all the things without getting like completely overwhelmed because Here, don't worry. Um, this isn't just like I'm magically great at all of this. Um, because it it couldn't be further from. Um, so number one, moving on to number one, the quick fix. Uh, so unfortunately, like all quick fixes, it's not going to last forever. But if you feel like you are drowning, if you've got some like massive handwritten out to do list, um, this is going to be a great place to start. If you've never done anything but scribble things down on paper or you never even scribble things down on paper, this can be a great place to start for you. Um, and it's using the four squares system. Uh, if you are in the membership, there is a printable version of this in the downloadable section. Um, so you can grab that as well, or you can just copy it down. Um, so what it is, is the basic formula is having four squares. Um, across the top, you put important and unimportant. And then down the sides, you wrote urgent and non-urgent. And that creates the main four squares. I then added an additional column because I'm a little bit extra. <laughs> and I added that little time column. Um, because, well, we don't just want to do the basic, do we? We want to we like step it up a little bit. But start with those four main squares. And then we're taking like this crazy list of things that we've been dealing with. And we're starting to put them into the four. You can start to understand what is, be is, so what is going so utterly wrong with our to-do list and um, so we'll end up with the key zone that we want to we're going to focus on first is the unimportant and non-urgent if something is unimportant and not urgent should it really be on your to-do list not really it's going to be the odd exception um, and I, I don't think I've had anything in this section of my to-do list for a couple of years, but a few years ago, I did have something. So this is kind of the odd exception you're going to get, because I don't want you going, oh, well, if there's an exception, this doesn't work. No, no, there's the odd exception, but it's worth writing everything onto your list. Write it in that box. Even if you find yourself writing it in that box and think, oh, okay, so I need to get rid of this. Write it in there anyway. Let's, let's get everything off those scrappy bits of paper onto something or out of your head and onto something. Um, but a couple of years ago in January, I had something that would have fallen into this box that said, make a Christmas card holders. Now it's January, so certainly not urgent. <laughs> and is it really important? No, I didn't really want my Christmas cards on the sideboard and the table again, because every time we had lots of people around, I had to like clear the table. Um, was it that important? No, not really. Didn't get done with the world then, no. But it was like a, oh, I'd quite like to do this. It's in my head. I need to put it down somewhere. So it went down onto that. It would go down into that little box, the important and non-urgent. And as it got closer to Christmas, it became more important and it became more urgent. Um, so, and I realized how much it actually meant to me to not have cards cluttering up all the sideboards. I love to cook. We like to have hosting at Christmas, that kind of thing. And um, suddenly it improved in importancy. I don't know if that's a word. I know potency is, but we're going to go with the word importancy. It improved in importancy. <laughs> and so it moved itself out. So those are the rare, rare exceptions. And um, you've then got the unimportant and urgent things. Now, unfortunately, it's very hard to get out of these things, the out of the unimportant things once they've become urgent. We want to be dealing with them while they're unimportant and non-urgent. So either letting go of the stress of them because if something's urgent, it doesn't matter whether it's important or not, it will be stressing us out. We don't like that. We don't want any of that stress going on. And um, so we want to try and get, we just want to try and nip it in the bud before it gets to the urgent stage. Um, but it also might be that we're focusing on it for the wrong reasons. Uh, so it could be something like that form for school that you think is stupid, but just gets them on that school trip. It doesn't feel, it's urgent, but it doesn't feel important. But actually what you're focusing on is not important, is filling out the form. What is important is that your kid gets to go on the trip with all their classmates. 
Um, now that's a very simplistic way of looking at it, a very simplistic example, um, and it could go a million different ways. But sometimes when we haven't like really noted the importance of something, it's not the thing itself, it's the consequence of doing it or not doing it. So losing out on something, gaining something. Um, I'm very lucky, my partner loves cooking. Uh, I'm uh, peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs, but I love eating. <laughs> So if for some reason he's not here, he's not going to be able to do dinner, um, then I have to focus on the fact that if I don't do the cooking, I won't get to the eating bit. Um, and this could be same with like another project of work um, or it could be the same with oh, fitness and exercise. Most of the time I like doing the actual exercise because I've now found exercises that I like. I hang upside down. I do lots of headstands at the moment. I like lifting weights. Um, but if I have those little moments where I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to do it, and I know I've got the energy to do it, I have to focus on why I want to do it. So I want to do it to add more energy. I want to do it so I've left the house today. I want to do it because picking up heavy things is really fun. I, I have to focus on what's going to be the, the positive or negative consequence of me not doing that thing and make and look why that is or it's not important. Um, and never decide. So that can be the other ones why things end up sneaking into that important and urgent, uh, urgent and unimportant action. Um, there should be not very many things in there. We don't want many unimportant things in our lives. Uh, there will be those few things. Uh, maybe it's too late, like I said, to get offering the thing. Um, we can't get someone else to do it because, yeah, if it's not important to us, yeah. say one of you really likes a clean house and someone else that lives in the house doesn't really care it's going to be unimportant for the don't really care person so maybe that's a job for the person who cares about it um and the other person can do something else that matters to them is there a way that you can jig that around um then we've got into the important column so most people think they should be living in the important and urgent column where we should ideally be living is the important and non-urgent because that's when we've got ahead of everything and we're not getting as stressed about things and we can do things as in the best of our capabilities. That said, I know I'm ADHD and I know we have quite a few ADHD people within the community, other neurodiverse people. Sometimes we need the urgency <laughs> to get the thing done, which we talked about in the masterclasses around procrastination and getting your brain to do things when it doesn't want to. And um, so that's like a side note. So I'm fully aware that that exists but we want to mainly be living to our own deadlines. So it might be that our manager sets a deadline of the 20th of the month, but we make it urgent by setting ourselves a deadline of the 5th of the month. Um, and that way we make it urgent enough to do it. But that's a whole other masterclass. But aiming to have a to-do list that sits predominantly in that important and non-urgent is where we're gonna start to feel less overwhelmed, more in control of what we're trying to do. Um, Da, da, da. So that is my like first stop quick fix. Tasks and to do's. This is probably the biggest mistake I see with people's to do list and why they often seem like ridiculously long. Um, for clarity, this is actually a recent brain dump I did. That's why it's so long. I don't tend to make to do lists that I can't log in for. Um, maybe like once a year, I'll do a bit of a clear out of my head. Um, but tasks and to do's so task this is a jessism this isn't a dictionary definition at all this is this is how i define it um so a task is anything that repeats daily weekly monthly or bi-monthly or like anything in between there so laundry food shopping uh if there's a certain number of posts you always put on your instagram if you always have to do a weekly newsletter for your business um reading the meters so every month I read our electric and our gas meter well I usually tell my partner to do it because there's spiders in the boxes and I don't like spiders um but I have an alarm for it <laughs> so that I remember to remind him because I still can't get him on google calendar um things like the food shop um, often it's unfortunately the very unexciting like household tasks are definitely tasks and then to-dos are more the one-offs, the rare activities, the steps as projects. And I like to think of them as to-do and be done. So they're things that are going to, we're going to predominantly do them once and then it will be over. Um, and say the exception being maybe a yearly thing. It's like I'm, I'm always going to have to do every year. I'm going to have to do something for my daughter's birthday. But because it's yearly, I don't bother. Bi-monthly is usually, usually my limit for splitting tasks and to-dos. 
Tasks should not be on your to-do list. <laughs> One more time. Tasks should not be on your to-do list. <laughs> Tasks should be pre-scheduled in your calendar or your and or your routine. Now, I'm a lover of Google, lover of Google Calendar. We have got a uh, workshop coming up in the membership soon about setting up your Google Calendar. Um, having the repeat tasks on there automatically puts them in and you can look at it and see your overlay of your routine. Even if you just use it to map out your routine, I think Google Calendar is magical. Not endorsed or anything by them, just like it. You can make it look pretty with colors. There's other calendars if you so wish, but if you don't use one and you don't wanna to have to do lots of research, just go and sign up for Google Calendar. It integrates really well with lots of other systems too, which for me is a big win. Um, but those key things, even if they're gonna to have to be moved around slightly, give them a place that's roughly reliable so i approximately do the food shop after the school run on either tuesday or wednesday so it's in my calendar for wednesday uh no at the moment i think i've moved it to tuesday now tuesday after the school run drop her off at school do the food shop come home sometimes i have to move it to wednesday sometimes i move it to before pickup but that's its predominant spot and it means i'm just moving it slightly on my calendar as opposed to every week going oh, when am I going to do the food shop? Or worse, getting to make the food and finding there's no food there. That's horrendous. I hate that because I do not like going to the supermarket. I need to psych myself up. I need like a big amount of caffeine to go in there. And I need to make sure I've got my headphones with me. Otherwise, it's just not a fun experience. It's still not a fun experience even with the headphones. Not going to lie. Um, but having that all in a routine means those key things, those like have to happen to keep life, family, health. So if you have medication you have to take, if you have physio sessions like that, those would be tasks. They would be regular things that are going into that calendar and they're not gonna live on your to-do list. So straight away we've like halved, if not quartered some people's to-do list by removing those items and just having the things that are those to-do and be done with type items on our actual to-do list. And um, so I guess that's more a, that's a tool, like I said, these are tools as opposed to a specific list, but that would be my, my next magical tool. We are going to move on to daily to-do lists. I have a very, very firm opinion of the daily to-do list. Very firm opinion. Anyone that's done anything with me will know this. It is three things. We only have three things on our daily to-do list. That is it. Sometimes more things happen, but we only think pick three things I don't know what it is about three it's a magic number um and I do actually have this so there is 366 faces I don't date anything in the book so you can make one of these but it's 12 months worth but you can make it last four years if if you're a dip in and out of kind of planner person I just sometimes it's nice to just have the motivation to go back and forth um so I have in the book I have something I'm grateful for but that's like a bonus thing I always say check your mental and physical energy so we have a post in the Facebook group uh, every day um, and we have a WhatsApp group if you are a member. So if you're a club member, there's also a WhatsApp group that supports the online membership. And we have a post in both of those each day that says, what's your mental and physical energy? Um, and then set your three priorities. So we want to go to our brain. Uh, what have I got to give today? Because we've all, all this thing can't pour from an empty cup. And if you haven't got it, you can't give in. You're just going to keep consistently burning out um, and consistently causing yourself problems. So check in what mental energy of out of 10, keep it simple, out of 10 have I got? What physical energy out of 10 have I got? And then I will set my top three priorities. Um, and I know people in the WhatsApp uh, group will reply to the post. People on the Facebook group will comment under there. It's like a picture graphic each day that comes up. Um, for some reason, yesterday's didn't post, but that's my job for after this is to go and work out why that one didn't post. Um, but pop in underneath. They've got that accountability about the three things they're going to do. Um, so you could write it on one of those. So you've got it to check back. You could write it on a piece of paper, a post-it. You want to stick on, on your computer screen. You don't write on your hand really but if you're desperate write it on your phone save it as your backdrop whatever's going to work for you but set just three and for each of those three there should be no more than three steps to complete them now for me I define a step as something that doesn't feel overwhelming right. something that doesn't feel overwhelming so you've got three priorities each with a maximum of three steps might have less 
but a maximum of three steps and a maximum of three priorities. Some days you might be like, I got one priority. We always like big cheerleaders of people that are like, my one priority today is rest. And rest for me is going to be sitting on the sofa or rest for me is going to be lying in my bed because I'm always like, it's got to be specific. What does resting today look like? Resting today for one person might be going for a, a 20 minute walk. For someone else, it might be sleeping all day. So understand what that means. But those three steps, having something that isn't overwhelming. So if I set my energy levels and check my energy levels in the morning and I'm like, okay, I'm probably a three mentally, <laughs> but a 10 physically, then I can pick the, the tasks that align in that. So for me, if I've got a lot of physical energy, not much mental energy, cleaning is a great one for me. I always find that boosts my mental energy. And obviously it's very physical, so it uses up a lot of my physical energy. So that's a great one for me to do when I've got those kind of levels, because I will find I'll actually boost my mental energy by doing it. Not always going to be able to do that, but I can boost my mental energy by doing that. Um, if I've got a lower physical energy, but I still need to get my cleaning done, I might set three much smaller steps. So I'd be like, oh, it's meant to be a clean the house day, but I've got a physical energy of about four today. I can't move cleaning the house because ideally you would then be like, okay, I'm going to move it today. I've got my energy. I can't move cleaning the house. So I'm going to make sure that I wipe the kitchen counters. I've emptied the laundry bins um, and maybe probably wipe the bathroom sink would be my like bare minimum. Um, or I'm going to make sure I message my partner and say, I haven't got it in me to clean today. Could you please do some bit? And luckily we both predominantly work from home. Um, so that usually works. I like cleaning, but I don't like hoovering. I find that really boring. I want a deep clean. I don't like vax, the wet dry vax. Our neighbor's got a brilliant one we borrow sometimes. Very exciting for me. I don't mind doing that, but hoovering, oh, I just don't see enough of a difference for it to be exciting. So I normally get to do that. Um, so being able to make those kind of adjustments based on the energy levels. So is it that you can change the activity that you've got to do to make it more friendly to the energy you've got available? Or could you adapt the, the task you've got to do based on the energy available? But sticking to those three things, each with three steps in and base those steps on what doesn't feel overwhelming. So on a day where you've got loads of mental energy, one of those steps might be something quite big because it doesn't feel overwhelming because you've got more mental energy. A day with low mental energy, the steps might have to be smaller because you've got less to give. Um, there's no point in trying to give what you don't have. So always check in with those, check your energy and set your three priorities. And that's your daily to-do list. It's as simple as that. Keep to a maximum of three. If you get all three done, then you can be like, okay, oh, I can do this now. And not forgetting that our tasks are not our to-dos. So our task, our regular routine is not our to-do. So you can be like, oh, well, um, oh, I always do the food shop. So that, by the time I've done the food shop and emptied the dishwasher and like made my bed, that's three things gone. No, because those are tasks, they're not to-dos. Uh, you were all cleverly integrated with each other, can't you? Um, so where did I get to? This one. Da -da -da -da. Weekly, the daily makes sense that we have a weekly um i normally have my weekly to-do list notepad on my desk um but i don't today I don't like... and so we were at a big event of the week and so i've got to still reset the house and put everything back because once we got back it was all about just having time with my little one and making sure ah here it is not far right it's under a piece of paper and um, here we go so weekly, this is my weekly to-do list. I like a notebook. Um, I like Teal, if you hadn't guessed already from my slides and all my work branding, I like Teal. This is my weekly to-do list. Um, the magic with a weekly to-do list is you put what's happening in that week on it. And um, so if I jump down to the next slide, I can show you uh, what I mean. So this is an overlay of what's inside my weekly to-do list. Um, I went to see a friend the other week because I mainly work online. I don't often see people in person, apart from like I had this event weekend. Um, and I went uh, on my birthday, I met up with a friend and we had a coffee and a sandwich. Um, and then we sat and just did some work next to each other. And she got out her to-do list notepad that looked just like mine. And she'd done all the foldy page thing that I taught. And I was just like, 
welling up because it was so nice to see like someone physically doing it in front of me I know I see a lot of people will hold their books up in sessions but um it was just so cool to have someone sat next to me doing my to-do list system um so this idea is we got the week commencing in the top right hand corner as you can see on the little picture I think my you should be able to see my little mouse it might appear I'm never sure on screen share if you can see the mouse or not um but up here we've got our week commencing um, graphic in the book. So anyone that's got a book, this graphic is in there. Um, and if you're in the membership, it will be in the downloadable section. And then get up the top, write the list of things that's going to be done in that working week. So my working week is Monday to Friday, my weekend, Saturday, and Sunday. I have a normal work at the moment. I have in the past worked. Um, through Saturday, so that might be your working week. You might only work three days a week, but in week and your sort of personal time. Um, okay. Going to do something together to make sure that we've got all of this um that we've just got one of each um, three minutes do we need to allocate the task um, and I also do these in blocks of time. So if it's if it's a uh, uh, if it's a one hour job, I'd write sixty minutes. However, if it's a one if it's two one hour jobs, so if I need to do it in two blocks of one hour, I would write two times three. Because then I can look at it and go, oh, I need sixty minutes. I've got sixty minutes today. I can do that sixty minute task. Um, so I'd always recommend write it in the it, clearly in the blocks of the time you're going to. Which is a whole other It's yeah. <laughs> um, I was so um. Oh, so we seem to have a bit of. Let's give it a second. I. I'm literally sat right next to my hub, so I'm kind of hoping it's just settling down from the two of you joining. Um, it's okay now. Cool. Um, <laughs> so we've got our Monday to Friday. That's our working week. To-dos down the middle. Our week commencing at the top. We've put our priority order in and we've put our amount of time in. That would be my week. Come Friday or whichever your last day of the working week is, I will then fold over my piece of paper. So this is my list, fold it over. And I will use this reverse side here to write anything I'm willing to let into my weekend. So that could be that I've got something I didn't get done that I really wanted to finish. And um, I've got an impending deadline that actually I'm quite happy to give some of my weekend to. If you love what you do, you don't mind giving up your weekend to do it. 
Um, it could be something that involves my daughter or my partner and they weren't available during the week. Um, but I like to break up that working week and that weekend list and have that pause. And I think particularly for neurodiverse brains, seven days is a long time. It's a long time to think ahead over. So if we're just doing like the five days, we can do a little check-in on Friday. That's the end of your working week. Little check-in on Friday. What am I going to allow into my weekend? What do I want to make sure I catch up with in those last two days? For me, that was such a game changer for me actually getting everything done. Um, and I also find that just sometimes I need just two days to get something done. It's, it adds to that little pressure, that little gamification um, that we've talked about in the procrastination workshops and in the getting your brain to do what you want it to do workshop. Um, I will be repeating those. So those are available in the membership. Um, if you are a member um, and I will be repeating both of those in the next couple of months um, outside of the membership as well. So keep your eyes peeled on Eventbrite. It will come up then. Um, but that's how I manage my weekly one. It's having it as a weekly, a weekly list. Um, and this one is actually fed. So this one will help feed my daily one, which we talked about before. Um, but this will also be fed by the next one we're going to talk about. So let me scroll down, which is our long term to do lists. Um, there is a whole session on long term to do lists in the membership, do not worry. Uh, this is just a brief overview <laughs> of the concept of what it is. Um, so long-term to-do list, my personal platform for you doing them is Trello, because there ain't no party like a Trello party. Um, you've got things like monday.com. Um, I believe some people still use pen and paper, which I, I like pen and paper, don't get me wrong, but for a long-term to-do list, I just don't think it's a productive use of time. Um, with Trello, you can, and with lots of the other sort of similar, I think Notion does similar things as well. You can attach pictures, you can attach documents, you can put deadlines on, you can set an alarms and alerts. You can have other people looking at the same long-term boards with you. Um, long-term to-dos go over a long period of time. Some of them will sit on there and then not get done like you will just decide that they're not right for you by the time they are things that come into your brain we need to put them somewhere and um, I have things like that on my long-term to-do list I have family and work and everything this is like it's like the hub of my brain because if I leave it all in here it will explode <laughs> it will explode you have to put it somewhere it's hard enough remembering the three things I've got to do today without thinking about the things I want to get done over the next five years or the thing I want to do before I die, whenever that might be. Um, so having a Trello board and literally the course in the membership goes step by step. We even have um, for members a template that you can like, you can start with my Trello template and then edit it as opposed to starting from scratch. Um, or if you use another platform, you can go and have a look at that and, and break it down. But it's similar principles. I just like my heart belongs to Trello, like my heart belongs to Google Calendar. Those are the ones I teach. Um, and then you have you can apply the same principles. Um, but it's having somewhere to put everything that is together and isn't going to get lost. And then you can start adapting it to be in a more orderly way. So if nothing else, type out your long term to do list and put it in an Excel sheet or a Word document. But we have these superior platforms now. We might as well make use of them um, and also find the ones that that play with you. I like the look of Trello. Um, I have seen some of the other ones that, that look pretty, but I'm already sold. So, uh, but find the one that your, that your brain looks at it and goes, yay, this looks nice. I like the look of this. And um, like find one, find a platform like that because we underestimate massively how something looks, um, how, how much more we are likely to do something if something looks the right way for us, if it makes our brain happy. So um, find the one that works for you. Uh, if you don't know how to use any of them, go use Trello. <laughs> and having it in a way that I can look at, uh, look at it in one go as well. So this is where I will go as part of my weekly review. Um, again, sorry, I know I'm saying in the membership, but there's so much stuff in there. It's my, well, it literally is my little gold mine. Every little gold bullion I've created, I've put into there. And so there is an audio, a video and an ebook version of the weekly review because it's that magical um and then if you've got a copy of the book 
and there are like 52 worksheets to do the 52 how many weeks in a year 53 53 worksheets to do it as well as I've now got hiccups a full explanation behind the whole thing so you can learn how to do it properly as well but as part of that each week I go into my long-term to-do list and I pull out what needs to get done this coming week and that could be choice could be that there's something in there that I really want to do this week because did you know that sometimes we get to choose what we do it's really fun um it could be choice it could be deadline which is less exciting um it could be that we put our own deadline on it that we set a time that we want to do it um uh it could be that we've got not very much free time this week so we're picking something that's really small and it's going to be easy to do maybe we've had some bad news um, and so we're feeling completely zonked out and we need something fun to do. And that's the only, if we're going to achieve anything this week, it needs to be that fun task, that thing that really excites our brain. Whatever it is, it, that's where I go to write that weekly to-do list. I go into my long-term to-do list and it reminds me. So I look at that, I'll look at my calendar. Um, but also sometimes I've written a couple of bits ahead of time, but have it somewhere digital I think having long-term to-do lists on paper, and I'm, I do like a lot of the concepts around like bullet journals and things, but I just think from a practicality standpoint, long-term to-do lists should be digital. I'm yet to see anyone do them on paper that has worked better, that's been more time effective um, and a better way of keeping everything together. Um, so it's one of, I, there's not many things where I'm like, it has to be digital, it has to be paper. I prefer my weekly paper, but you could do this digital if you wanted to. Um, brain drains, which we're going to talk about in a minute. I prefer those on paper, but then I move them onto my digital to-do list. So I'm I'm very much hybrid when it comes to digital and paper. Um, but that is, so long-term to-do lists. Brain drains! Um, I don't like the word brain dump, but it is the same thing. I just don't like the word dump. <laughs> No, it makes me think of like smelly piles of sewage at the recycling centre um, in, the, in the UK. We still, yeah, well, we definitely, my generation definitely did. We called it the dump, even though they're now all called recycling centres. Um, and for me, a brain dump is where all the things in your brain go to die and never be seen again. Whereas brain drain, uh, for me, I don't know, it's water, it's fresh, it's flowing. I just, I get better visual connotations with brain drain. So. I use that, um, but it's the exact same concept. I'm sure there's other versions of it. And um, I use my three main uh, three main life categories as prompts. Uh, so I'll make three columns on a piece of paper, or I love big pieces of paper for a brain drain. So this this would be a small piece of paper for me for a brain drain. This is an A3. So worst case. A3, uh, but I actually have an A2 notepad that literally just comes out a couple of times a year when I do my big brain drains. Um, and I love having that big empty space to work on. And then I'll do three columns. If you've only got A4 paper, because some people live in the normal world, um, very dull, uh, then you could have three separate pieces of paper and just have A4 paper um, and have them on there um, and use the prompts of personal, professional, and then family, friends, and home. Um, um easy to get lost yes i like i like i like the big big pieces um ooh, that's almost missing. oh we've got suddenly got a load of people in the waiting room wait a sec okay um so getting it all getting it all nicely mapped out your personal your professional and your family and friend brain drain and then i use my four little magic symbols because otherwise it's just a big mess of stuff <laughs> So brain drain it out. We've got the little arrow pointing to the, for me, that's pointing to the right hand side on the piece of paper. I don't know if I'm mirroring on here. Um, I had to teach a dance on here last week and I kept having to flip my camera and then also face away to teach the dance. So that was a whole other mirroring thing. But yeah, I put, I have the arrow pointing to the right because that's what makes sense for me. But it's just an arrow pointing up to the side. That means that I have put that item that's on my brain drain onto something, usually onto my long-term to-do list. It might be pretty urgent and it's gone into my top three priorities, but it means I've put it somewhere. It's no longer on the list there to just die. Put an arrow. The little drop down arrow is imagine when you are on a computer and you click that little drop down list and you get all the other options. 
that means that the item on my brain drain needs to be expanded. So it's more likely to be a project, something that I've got to break down into further chunks. Because um, what will happen is if you don't put something there, you can put a P for project if you want. I just like little symbols. Um, if you don't put something there, what you will find is that you will look at that thing and get incredibly overwhelmed because it's not that thing you've got to do. What you've got to do is all the little steps underneath. Um, it's like that infographic where there's two ladders next to each other and they both reach the same height, but one's got lots and lots and lots of little steps. One's got big, wide steps. And this little person's trying to reach this first ladder step, but it's too high. Whereas the other one can scamper up because he can reach all the little ladders as he goes up. Um, if you are looking at it and seeing this massive jump, how on earth am I ever going to do that without being like, ah, I get it. I like can see that. Um, it's got more steps that's okay and then you can do that on a separate bit of paper or you can make space on the piece of paper you've got but identifying that it's a project and that it's more than one step is the first step forward <laughs> um cross is literally i've got it out of my brain and now i've realized it was stupid and i don't want to do it and i'm not going to do it and it's just not happening sometimes we literally need that process of it going brain to hand to piece of paper before we can fully realize that, oh, that's not important. Like it will be buzzing around and driving you nuts. I like to think of that, that little old fashioned tennis game where it's sort of the two little sliders and it's just the ball pinging around. And that's all the things you've got to do are between here and here going ping, 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 ping. But actually at least half of them, you, you have no intention of doing and you're not gonna do. And once you put it down on the piece of paper, it might be you see how many other things you've got to do. And you're like, that's not a priority. That's not gonna move me forward, be it personally or professionally. Um, that doesn't align with who I am. That doesn't align with my core values. Um, so it might be, you might be a little hermit like me who doesn't really like going out very often, like twice a year is about my limit. Um, post Christmas, go out twice a year, fine, I'm done socially. But I might have suddenly got into my head for some reason that I'm not social enough and I need to go out more. And I write it down on my to-do list, on my, my big brain drain. Um, right, I'm going to book a girl's night out. And that would seem like such, in my head, that would seem like such a great idea. It seems such a normal thing to do. Book a girl's night out with my girly friend. I've even got some that live close that could actually get here easily. Um, they could stay on the sofa and stay over like great great wonderful but in the time it would take it to get from my head to my pen and be written down I would go heck no I do not want to do that I might have them over for pizza but going out for a girl's night is my idea of hell however we get stuck and this is obviously a very simplistic example but we can get very stuck into the idea of something in our heads and literally the process of writing it down with all the other things that we want to do makes it so much easier to see what's a priority where we want to spend our time how many different directions are we trying to split ourselves it can make it so much easier to put that big cross done not doing it anymore done i've let it go it's fine I'm moving on and um, so don't underestimate the power of the cross. Um, and then I have a little circle if I spot anything that's super, super urgent. Because sometimes things have got buried in our brains under all those ping pong balls that are going around. It's those the actual urgent things got buried under booking the girls night out and trying to get a six pack and like learning how to speak Mandarin. Um, and actually underneath there is the fact that you were meant to send a hundred vouchers for that event a week ago and you still haven't sent the box. Um, so little circles, those, those are my four. I find anything more than four and I'm like, I now have doodled all over my whole list, but I've moved things off the list. I've decided that there's more things to, to do. There's a drop down list. I've decided I'm not doing it or I need to make sure it's an urgent item. That, that should be an absolute enough to make that brain drain go from a list of chaos into something you understand and something you can move forward. Um, and you can then decide if you want to put it onto your long-term to-do list. Um, I do find sometimes I work with clients and uh, when I work one-to-one -one and for a while, um, while they're getting to grips with everything, they will work off their brain drain list. It's not ideal, but it's realistic.
um, to be working off that list for a little while while you're getting the other things in place. It's not often that people have, that people are struggling with managing their time and their energy and their productivity. They don't usually have the time to implement everything at once that's going to be helpful. And also, if you do that, you're just going to get overwhelmed with the sy systems and the, like the maintenance of it. So like pick the one that you think is going to have the best impact for you now. Um, but also the one that you think is going to cause you the least amount of stress to do in the first place. I say this when I do decluttering houses. Um, people will be like, oh, well, oh, it'd be really useful to have my wardrobe done. Like that has a really bad impact. My messy wardrobe has a really bad impact on me. But then also talking to them, they'll tell me about how sentimental they are with clothes. And I'm like, that is going to drain you. Doing that project is going to drain you. We need to find that balance between something that's going to give you a win, but isn't going to exhaust you, isn't going to wipe you out. So we want the, the most bang for our buck, basically, when it comes to anything in life, don't we? Like the most reward, we want to lift one book up and suddenly have big biceps. Like, yeah, we want the most, most bang for our buck possible. And um, so that's when you're going back through these, like which one is going to be the best one for you. Um, if nothing's written down, then you probably want to be going straight to the brain drain and then looking for those key circle items to get going get going with uh, all right look at us nearly running on time and everything um so this is the last one it's the project to do list so this is if we go back to this one the drop down arrow that's what you'd create to this so if what you're most overwhelmed with at the moment is this one big project you've got to do then this is going to be the tool for you this is going to be that it's like a brain drain but focused on a specific topic um, you then want to be making sure that you are putting them into priority order um, because with projects, with things that create a whole, um, there is often a very specific order we need to do it in. There is no point in building your website if you haven't done your branding colours. There's no point in creating your logo if you haven't done your branding colours. Do some work analogies because I feel we've done enough Girls Gone Wild analogies today and cleaning ones. Um, you need to make sure that you're logically thinking through the steps in order. Um, which ones are gonna help you, inspire you to do the next? Because sometimes it's not as much a specific practicality issue. Um, it's about thinking what is, the, um, what is the way that's gonna keep me moving forward? Um, so if you're gonna get really hung up in doing your market research and gonna find that really doom and gloomy, then think about where in the list that is going to go that's going to make the most sense for you all our brains are different um as much we've i definitely know within the membership and within the community we've got neurotypical and neurodiverse um but even within both of those categories we've still got such a plethora of different things everyone's experiences will impact how their brain works what they what environment they work best in um and then we've also got the the lifestyle that we're currently in that will be affecting how our brains work as well um and that's why we have to adjust for what works best for us i don't think there's any right and wrong way to manage our time i always talk about it as a toolkit and getting the right tool out at the right time for the right task. Um, so for this would be for the project to-do list, I've got a big thing I want to achieve. So a um, good recent example for me was obviously writing the book um, and I broke those down into steps. For something big like this, so this came out in November last year, um, I had drop-down lists that then had their own drop-down lists. <laughs> so a drop-down list that then created other drop-down lists. Um, I quite like doing them as a as a pyramid, like sort of a sideways pyramid. Uh, it's like a plain piece of paper. Um, so if I have, I'll put like the, the thing here that got brain drained, write a book. And then I might have three things. And then each of those might have three things. And I'm sure it's got official um, mind mapping. There we go. I might mind map it. Or you might prefer to put it into lists. You might like to do it on an Excel sheet. What works best for you? For me, mapping out a project, pen and paper. I love pen and paper for this kind of thing. I have my big pots of rainbow sharpies that my daughter painted for me. Rainbow sharpies and fine liners. I'm me, much more likely to achieve a goal if I have planned it with rainbow pens. I don't know why, it's what works for me. Other people are more likely to achieve it if they've done it straight onto a computer. Um, but I do that first sort of map out of the big project we'll do to pen and paper, making sure that I look at each step individually and it doesn't feel overwhelming. 
Um, and it might be that when you're writing, when you're mapping out the project, you're so excited that nothing feels overwhelming. You feel like you can conquer the world and you might have to break it down a little bit as you move along. But trying to break those steps down so you can look at each individual one and be like, I, I, knew, I know what I need to do to that one. I know how to how to make that step move forward. Um, and it might be you look at the, the one before and go, I don't know how to do that. So one of the steps is Google how to do the thing. <laughs> Watch YouTube videos on how to do the thing. Ask Dom how to do the thing. If it's Dom as area of expertise. Sorry, Dom, you got picked on because you've got picture up and I can see your name straight in front of me. Um, all those kind of bits. It's like th that's the kind of level that you might need to break some of those down to. Um, it's up to you. It's up to your brain. And it's making sure that you're being realistic and kind to yourself. Um, just because some people can like break a project into five chunks and go off and achieve all of them does not mean that the rest of us can. It's fine. It's fine. I stopped setting my levels of what everyone else did a long time ago and it was wonderful. Um, so that is my set. That's my seven. We've gone through seven already. Um, that is my seven tools that we're going to talk about today. Um, like I said, it's all about picking the right tool for the right job. Um, the replay of this, um, if you signed up via Zoom, you will make sure, signed up via Zoom, if you signed up via Eventbrite to the Zoom, you will get an email link as well for all of this. Um, don't worry. Um, so you can go back through um, all the first bits and pieces too. Um, and there'll also be a replay available in the Facebook group, which is Declutter Get Organised to Feel Happier. Um, let me drop the link to the Facebook group in the chat now. Um, I'll drop it in the Zoom chat and then you can grab that as well. So there'll be a replay on there. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll talk about to everyone. There you go. So that takes you through to the Facebook group. Um, there'll be the replay in there, but then I'll also set the link over if you signed up um, via Eventbrite. Um, and also with any, whenever I do any sessions like this, I also save a copy into the membership. So I like for the members to be able to access everything in one place as well. So um, if you're a member, you'll be able to find it in there too. Look at us like finishing on time. Miracle, miracle. The event I was at at the weekend last year, we ran over by two hours. This year, we got in half an hour under time. I was very impressed. Look at us, three minutes under time today. Um, so do pop, if you've got any questions um, on the Zoom, pop them in the comments. Um, anything on Facebook, um, I will reply to later as well. So if something pops up, um, you can always email me too. Um, and if you're a member, you've got access on WhatsApp to me. You can always uh, DM me on WhatsApp. Um, yes, don't worry, Tony, you can watch it back. Yeah, watch it back on the replay. Um, I will get that out later today. So everyone's got that. Um, oh, don't forget, I also put the, like we talked about at the beginning, it's not just about getting things done. It's about making sure that we're living a life in line with who we are and how we want to show up in the world um, where happiness in all its shapes and forms is a priority. Um, so if you want to know a little bit more about uh, what is hindering your happiness at the moment, um, then do make sure you are checking out my free quiz. I will resend the link for that in the bottom for anyone that missed that. Um, that's my what is hindering your happiness um, assessment quiz. Um, doesn't take too long don't worry it's like a tick it's a tick box system um, and then you get lots of information that will help you um, move forward for a happier life and um, this is where I always run over because I just keep talking and I should do a handstand and clap and sing and dance and that would end it all um <laughs> it should be great um, I do have a song I have a theme tune um Anyway, if you have any questions that come up when you watch replays, do pop me an email. Uh, do come over and join in the Facebook group. The dailies, like I said, we talked about the daily posts, the daily to-do list. We talk about those each day. There is a post that goes up that reminds you to set your daily priorities. Um, and if you're in the membership, you've also got that in the WhatsApp group. Um, I'm Jessica, the Lifestyle Coach UK and founder of a Happy Lifestyle Club, uh, award-winning online business of the year 2023. Um, and I will see you soon. Ta ta for now. If you want to be happy, it's going to have to be a lifestyle switch. And if you want to be happy, you're going to have to do the work indeed. Quick fixes become fat and diets to take back your time and live your life for you. Because if you want to be happy, it's going to have to be a lifestyle switch.